It asks questions that a lot of us, you know, ask throughout our lives. And uh, I thought that that was very meaningful, very thoughtful, and also um, very well executed in some of the thematical structure in the, in the movie um, inside of a, a high concept film. So that was really unique, and I thought that was really exciting for me. Some of the qualities that I admire about Christopher, his transparency and uh, how he doesn't, how he's not, and he's really analytical and he's not trying to hide anything. And I think he really wants to know the truth. Um, and then also I think he's the, uh, the central, um, I don't know if I'd say the central metaphor, but he, you know, he's kind of the vehicle for that central theme that, you know, whether or not we should be good or we should be bad in life or whether it matters if you're just going to die in the end anyway. And so I think that, you know, the weight of carrying that throughout the film was really exciting to me. I think he's everything that I thought he would be, um, you know, uh, on and off the set. And uh, I think he's, he's bringing the best to uh, you know, version of, of Richard that anybody possibly could. So, you know, it's always exciting to work with, with someone who's, um, who's a, as experienced as, as Colin Farrell is and, and to learn from, from those type of actors. Um, yeah, and it's great to have him in this movie. What impresses me most about Neil is his, his composure and his focus. Um, I think there's, you know, the schedule has been has been tough, and uh, it's a tough. There's a lot going on. It's a tough movie to, to make, and I think that you know it's a great challenge for him. And, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that that you know he's going to steer us in the right direction. Um, and yeah, and I love I love his. You know, he's he, he always gives really great analogies when when uh, when he's directing. So I, I think even yesterday it was like I can't remember exactly what he said, but. He gave me a great anecdote, and it's like that for every scene. You know, he always comes up with something that that you can connect to, and I think really great directors, you know, know how to do that. And I would, um, and so I think he's he's very unique and special in in that way. The blue is basically a a syrup that is mandatory for each crew member to take every day. Um, that, you know, it's said to be an enzyme or is said to, you know, contain vitamins that, that, that you need. Um, but in, in, in actuality, the blue also contains, you know, um, some type of sedative, some, you know, to suppress, you know, emotions, your sex drive, um, you know, aggression. Uh, so it, 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 you know, it really brings your personality down, your energy levels down. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's not, the kids on the ship aren't totally aware of this, and then they find out that it's a medication, basically, and they start to rebel against the mission by not taking the blue. We all spent quite a bit of time before we started shooting together, which I, I was only here a week before we started shooting, I think, or a week and a half before we started shooting, but I think we were, you know, the, the, all the cast and some of the crew, we were hanging out every day trying to grab dinner or trying to do things together, which was, I think, really essential to, um, because once you, once you move into production, you know, things start moving so fast and uh, it's really hard to, to find that outside of work. So, yeah, everybody did a really, um, really good job of, of making sure that that happened. And, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time with Billy Budd, our, our, um, our coach, and, and, uh, and, and did a lot of things, the cast did a lot of things together. So. Yeah, I'm super happy that we had the time to do that. I thought it was really interesting the way that not that that all of these characters, not only Sela, uh, get to explore kind of naturalism in a very unnatural circumstance and how to, you know, portray that kind of n numbed effect that they're all feeling by being on the blue, but also remaining kind of as human as you can be, especially for Sayla, because I think she is, to me, the character that has the most desire to be human and to feel human and to feel 
normal and to feel human connection and everything like that. And so those that was something that I was really excited to explore with her. And I also really admire just her kind of determination to be happy and to feel joy in whatever small ways that she can in this very kind of strange, um, you know, unnatural environment. I think that's what's really interesting about this film is that what it's really exploring is, you know, what are our true natures as human beings? You know, are we innately bad or good people? Um, and, you know, especially when people have been raised exactly in the same way in exactly the same environment, um, so that that's not a factor anymore, can we be inherently bad or inherently good? And I think that that's kind of the divide that happens. And I think that that's kind of a, the, the real kind of fight and, and, and um, struggle of this movie is kind of fighting against our own natures and figuring out, you know, what those even really are. Richard is the closest thing to a parent that they've ever known, and that's kind of a very natural, you know, human relationship to crave is one with your parents, um, you know, or one with a caretaker of any kind. And so I think that Selah being the one that's like, has the most longing to feel human and to feel connection to somebody else really cherishes cherishes the relationship that she has with Richard because he gives her that human connection and he makes her feel cared for and and seen and look at looked after and that's why I think her, her relationship to him is uh, so special to her. Colin's an actor that I that I love so much and whose work I've admired for so so long. So I was so happy to find out that it was going to be him playing Richard, and it's been just an absolute pleasure working with him. He's really just a lovely guy and so so easy to work with. So it's been great. I think that fans will really respond to this film because it explores themes that are that go beyond kind of a. a, a a sci-fi fantasy environment. It touches on real themes and real questions that we all have ourselves, like who are we? What is the meaning of life? You know, what are our true human natures? I think that those are things that people think about all the time. And so the fact that this movie um, really is about that, I think will speak to a lot, a lot of people and, you know, people beyond just sci-fi fans. Christopher and Zach discover that the blue's purpose is actually to kind of numb and dull all of our natural senses and the natural things that we would be feeling at this age, whether that's sexual desire or, or just kind of any kind of surplus of energy. Um, they don't want us to be feeling any of that. And it's also hard to be feeling all those things living in such a confined space when there is no way out of it. So it's um, kind of a drug that they have created in order to make life kind of possible for us, so to speak, on the ship, but also to kind of dull all of the senses that they don't want um, so exuberant as it would make life and work here on the ship um, I mean, almost impossible. Sela really starts to feel the most human when she goes off the blue, like all of them kind of do. She's starting to feel all those senses that have been kind of, that she's been kind of deprived of that are normal human senses to feel. And so I think that she's coming into all of that. And with that also coming into her leadership qualities that are, to me, she has innately in her. Um, and I feel like she really comes into her own as a person and as a leader when she goes off the blue. To me, the biggest theme of this movie is, is human nature and, and who are we really at our core when we take away things like experience and, and environment and childhood and all those things that aren't factors in this story. Who are we really when we are, you know, quote unquote, like it's said in the script, pure humans, when we are completely unaffected by experience or, or, or anything like that, and we're all raised exactly the same way in kind of the most basic, necessary way possible, who are we really at our core as humans? And what is our true nature when we're left to our own devices like this? Um, to me, that's the biggest theme in the movie and something that's explored um, quite thoroughly and, and very interestingly. It was a page turner. I, yeah, it was it was really, really lovely. It was very unusual. I thought it was very cleverly drawn. And the questions that it provoked in me as a reader were uh, fairly profound and substantial questions about, as I said, the nature of man and about uh, that kind of time honored um, 
query as to what is the fundamental experience of the human being. Is it more orchestrated by a fundamental nature or by a sense of nurture or environment? Um, and I, I loved it. I, I saw the part that I had as quite obviously on the page was a father figure and somebody that was there to kind of corral and guide and care for and monitor um, these children as they go from birth into young adulthood. And um, yeah, I loved it. I think Richard's lonely. I mean, he's got to be lonely. He's in space and he is, again, the only senior member of this this team um, heading into the void. So I think he has, you know, they all have each other to bounce off and, and they have him to bounce off. And there are v versions of therapeutic sessions that take place where Richard has a, a background in a certain degree of... of um, study in the realm of psychology and sociology so he's also in a position of preparation in relation to receive certain psychological or emotional things that any of the kids the young adults may be going through this is very much designed to entertain and and also you know to uh, provoke some thought as well you know i think it's a i think it's a, a worthwhile consideration for us as human beings to just um, to query our own natures and to also pay respect to everything that we've experienced in our life in the form of how we were nurtured or how we were not nurtured or what we felt was lacking or what we felt was abundant and to know that we carry all those pieces of information that are passed to us from very young ages through our lives but that we also do have as purportedly creatures that are above the common animal on the evolutionary scale transcendence of physical evolution but the evolutionary scale and regardless in regard to the idea of thought and consideration and compassion that we do have a responsibility and we do have an ability to access a fundamental nature that can give us an autonomy and allow us to make better choices in regard to serving our own lives and thereby serving the lives of the greater community that we're part of. I think that she has kind of a special role in the mission, as does everyone in the cast. Um, but I think that her tenacity, yet her human nature about who she follows and why she does it, was really intriguing to me. So um, I was very excited to play her. Neil kind of gave us, it was actually really cool, it was the first time I'd ever experienced this. He gave um, all of us this kind of like seven page uh, essay about what the movie was about and then he also gave me a separate like page about what my character was and why she was doing what she was doing throughout the movie and um, Richard who is played by the great Colin Farrell um, had like notes that his character had notes about each character and he kind of sent me those notes about my character so it was amazing and very in-depth I admire her good-naturedness I think throughout the film she kind of you know, as everything devolves to chaos, she um, always keeps the kind of strength and good-heartedness and we need to do the right thing throughout the whole film. Um, so I think that her morality is what I admire the most about her. It's to figure out, you know, the new planet that they're being sent to. Um, and it's kind of a special, special um, look at, like, kind of these kids are not going to make it themselves, but their next generations are. And so when they, when everything does do all the chaos, they're kind of like, why are we doing this? What is the real point of this? So it's very interesting. And uh, is actually very close with Alex. And before they're off the blue, uh, they kind of have a deep connection to each other and they don't really know what it is. And then off the blue, they kind of explore it, not only romantically, but um, in a sense that, hey, I get you, you get me, and, and um, I, they're very close in, in whatever sense of the word that you want to interpret it. Richard is kind of the father figure of these kids. Um, these kids were kind of born test tube babies, I guess. They were kind of born um, from, their, their parents are scientists and all these kinds of people. Um, but Richard is really the person to kind of be the only person on earth who they experience um, some sort of authority from and some sort of love from.
This film has an awesome ensemble of people from Ty Sheridan to Lily Rose Depp to Finn Whitehead to Colin Farrell to everyone. Everyone who's here is amazing. Um, super talented, of course, um, but also really great people, hilarious people, people that I want to be with around, you know, for the rest of my life. Um, and I think I really looked out to, to kind of be a part of this cast and in this ensemble cast and to be able to even work with them is, is such an honor. I think Neil is very um, meticulous about what he's doing and he knows exactly why we're doing this shot. And we do a lot of different takes and a lot of different shots of various scenes. And he, it, it feels like he knows exactly why. And it's so great to be working with someone who is um, so intelligent yet so, uh, he pays attention to every single detail. We did like two weeks of pre-production before we actually started the film where everyone kind of flew to Romania uh, where we're filming and to kind of, first of all, bond because all these kids known each other for their whole lives, so, or lives. So we kind of bonded in that way. Um, and we went out to dinners and we did cast, we went to an escape room, it was really fun. Um, but we also did uh, table reads and rehearsals and a part of that stunt training. Um, and that was really fun. I was really bad at it. <laughs> I'm not very athletic, but it was super fun. We did like somersaults. We learned how to fall down the right way. Um, we learned how to like wrestle because there's some scenes in which we wrestle even when we're on the blue. Um, so we wrestled each other and we, you know, wrestled some stunt people, which was very intimidating, but very fun. Um, and we like did some flips. We did somersaults. We did, we did, you know, the whole nine yards. <laughs> I was the last person to see the set, and I remember everyone just kept telling me it's claustrophobic, it's claustrophobic. And I was like, it's not, like, we have to fit, like, fit cameras and stuff in it. Then I walked in, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is really claustrophobic. Um, but it's beautiful, and I think the sets are really well made. And I, it's kind of nice because there's an interconnectedness to it. So it's like being in a ship. It's, you know, hallways lead to rooms, and, um, you know, we can walk to the med bay, we can walk to the, uh, uh, meal room all within one set so it really it it feels like an immersion sort of into the ship when I first read the script I I was really interested in how you know this kind of, I don't, because I don't think this, something to this magnitude or this premise has ever been, has ever taken place in space. So that was really interesting to, to see and, and, you know, try and envision how these characters be played out and, and the kind of desolation that occurs was, was very fascinating. So I, I was definitely really excited to be a part of this project. They're sending 30 kids, um, to this new planet that they plan to colonize and it's gonna take over 150 years, which would approximately be three generations to get there. And Teo is part of the first 30 that will kind of set them up for hopefully success. Um, he's part of the, the crew and he kind of functions all over the place. I think mainly he works with Data along with Edward. Teo is very calculative and was always pretty reserved. And so having him change throughout the course of the movie and having Teo exposed to these kind of different things like everyone else is, is fascinating. And, and you know, him in a particular setting and his given behavior um, in that kind of scenario and how that changes with these, um, with the blue is, incredible because there is this desire for power all of a sudden and, and um, raw expression comes out and it's definitely fun to, fun to kind of dive into that. Richard is the leader and he also kind of plays a father figure because he's always been the parental figure that they've always grown up with. Um, I don't think they've grown up with that much affection but I think if they've had any, it's come from Richard. So Richard is a pretty important part to them as people and also to them in, in their mission. From the scenes I have had with Colin, 
they have been exciting and also such an experience to watch someone who's been through it for years, countless years, and uh, he's such a delightful person to talk to. He's very friendly and uh, yeah, always down for a laugh. Neil has a very unique directing style. He likes to take things into his own hands and he likes to kind of shake things up the day of. Um, he likes um, the, the raw aspect of, of people. Um, when it comes to planning, he likes to leave it kind of just as it is. We're gonna, ha we're gonna make it happen now. And, you know, as, as actors, it's, it's also very exciting because, you know, uh, apart from rehearsing, changing things on the fly, um, really puts you in, in the setting. You're, you're really being, because you're there. You're not, you're not being trained like a dance. It's, it's raw. It's very, very real to be there. So yeah, I, 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 it, it is very interesting working with Neil and, and has been a pleasure. The set is, de is beautiful. I mean, the, the white and, you know, down to the last bolt is very immersive, definitely, to, to get into character and, and to think about being in space. Is, it, it, it's, and, and the narrow corridors really make you think about this claustrophobic spaceship that you've been cooped up and all of a sudden, you know, the, the release of, of energy and this animalistic sensation. It, it definitely does help being here and, and really being in that zone. And the costumes too, uh, they're first of all very comfortable, <laughs> thankfully, and you may, it makes us think about being here as cellmates almost, because we're, we've, we've been here for such a long time and, and you know, we're all wearing the same thing, we're going to the cafeteria and we've been emotionally stunted and told to do your job, keep, keep your head low and do whatever. And really thinking about it as, as being um, detained almost and, and, and definitely the white and the, the close corridors definitely really help with that. It's a very exciting um, ensemble cast that we have set up here. You know, very talented people and very talented people who have worked on this project. Um, and, you know, space is always very exciting because it's, uh, it's the final frontier, as we always call it. And um, putting kids in space without any parental guidance, any rules, I think it's, it's just ready for havoc and, and I think everyone's kind of excited to or would be excited to think about um, it's almost like a lab rat experiment putting what, what if we put kids 30 kids in in a spaceship and then their only parent dies and then they all all of a sudden get given you know five cans of coca-cola and what happens let them run awry and I, I, I think it's everyone's kind of like you know a tad curious to see what happens in that scenario so yeah I think everyone would kind of be interested to watch that. It's been incredible working with this cast. I think everybody is top of their game. Lily, Ty Finn, I th I've been fans of their work, all of them, uh, for years. Finn, I kind of knew a tiny bit beforehand, but you know, everybody makes such good choices. And as well as the amazing script, I think definitely the cast was a big part of the reason why I wanted to be involved in the project, because you know, Colin, Lily, Finn, Ty, it's like, well, if they're kind of a part of it, it's gonna be something special. And so it's been one of the real amazing things about being a part of this project so far, is just working with the people. It's been great. I think, Sci-fi or horror fans should see this film because it always is constantly keeping you guessing. I think it plays very cleverly with the viewer where you never know who to trust and you never know what is right or wrong. You never know whose side you're on because I think it's a very specific situation that none of us have ever been in. We, we don't know what it means to be stripped to our very core of what makes us human. And so I think a lot of people could be Team Zach to begin with and say, do you know what, I think I would wanna, I would wanna have fun and, see what, and, and test the limits. I think a lot of people 
you know, wouldn't want to break the rules like that. But there is also, there is also that element of fear when the alien kind of slips in and that is it real, is it not real, that suspense, the wars closing in, the constant suspense, I think that, yeah, will keep people on their toes. The blue has been working as a suppressant for our hormones and has been almost numbing us our entire lives, dulling the sensations of you know, excitement, sex, anger, those things that, I mean, potentially like make us human, really, when you add all those things into the mix. And so we've never really known the full potential of what we are as humans. And as we slowly, one by one, come off the blue, those feelings start seeping in again and it yeah, causes chaos. We have an excellent cast and it has been a pleasure working with all of them. Um, it's crazy to think that we've only known each other for a little bit over a month maybe. I feel like I've known them for my entire lives and I definitely consider them family now. I love movies that just have you on the edge of your seat, those suspense thrillers. Um, so I'm really excited for people to see our movie because even though it's in the sci-fi genre of it being set in space and it being in the future, it very much so is a psychological thriller and will have audience members on the edge of their seat wondering what's next and does this exist and doesn't it exist and who's going to win. I thought it was a really cool concept because in the real world this is something that we're going to have to, to think about if we are ever to, to send a human mission um, into the depths of space this is something we're going to have to consider you know raising entire generations of people on a spaceship so I thought it's quite a quite a cool thought experiment um, especially with the sort of breakdown of, of a society um, it's, it's always fun a slightly sort of dystopian-esque um, you know, people turning against each other as they so often do in the real world. Um, and I think the idea of having that on a, on a spaceship and the claustrophobia of that um, is it's, it's sort of the perfect, it's, it's one of the sort of perfect environments to explore that kind of thing. Edward's one of those sort of quiet, slightly weird characters. Um, and uh, I, I just like, I've always liked how still um, he, he kind of is, and uh, his, the fact that he's just focused on, on the data, he's not, he, even when people start breaking down and going a bit crazy, he's not sort of filled with rage or, or keen to, to sort of wreak havoc, he's still just focused A on the alien um, and B on the information, the evidence that he can kind of collect. Um, and, and I like the fact that he's a character who is, um, who is evidence-based and focused and, and just loves the data. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a fun thing to, to get to play. Julie takes what she wants. She is incredibly intelligent and I think um, She's had premeditated uh, feelings and thoughts about what's happening on the mission and her duty because she's also an engineer on the ship. And I think when Neil and I were talking, he was like, she kind of knows. And she like kind of acknowledges everything that's happening, but she chooses in her intelligence to not act on those things because it's outside the bounds of what she's been taught. And she knows that because she's incredibly intelligent. And so when I heard that, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like, you know, she's aware. So it was cool, like, trying to play someone who is aware from the start, but chooses not to, like, you know, drop into that consciousness. There's so many different elements about it that I feel like haven't been done yet. I feel like people talk about, like, animalistic nature and, like, you know, those instincts, basic instincts that, like, humans have in, like, some other types of films, but never really, like, encapsulating that, like, on a spaceship with, like, young children or, like, just young kids in general. I feel like it's just really, it, it's an interesting experience. So I would really, really love for people to watch it.
But it basically dulls like all of your senses and it um, prohibits you from kind of feeling all of these natural like instincts, natural desires and just your thoughts are solely focused on one thing and for us that's kind of been guided to carrying out the duties on the ship. Um, so that's what the blue does and then when we're off of it it's kind of like all of our animalistic you know instincts come to to the surface and we kind of go a little bit wild because I mean we're also teenagers so it's it's ridiculous. I think some of like the themes um, in the movie kind of relate to just basic animalistic human nature and like what we do in spaces that are like claustrophobic and it, I mean it's just kind of like I remember looking at like absurdist plays and like just ex like so many things like that when you're confined in this small space like what happens and it's interesting like when we're all on like one drug it's like complete unison and then when we're all off of it, it's just like kind of like chaos. And it's like, which one is the more natural version of us, you know? And so it's interesting like playing with those things and, you know, having so many of the actions of other people too kind of inform our decisions. And like, where does that like agreeance with one another come from? So I feel like those tones like completely relate to like, you know, those tones and themes like completely relate to the world today. I, I feel like there's, you know, so much going on in so many different places. And I think, you know, human nature like really is displaying itself in the rawest of ways, especially now. I identify as uh, being non-binary, non-gender conforming, and slightly on the trans masculine side. Um, so it's been like an interesting experience and I think especially with the way that the industry is moving right now there's so much like visibility and though there is like a lot of visibility at this time there's so much more that we can be doing and so much more that like films can offer for queer, trans, non-gender conforming peoples of all orientations and when I heard about this one just the sheer fact that like the costumes were ungendered was like that's a step that's a step like that's something that offers representation so even if films can do like slight you know changes um and even to the way that like we're all treated on on set as well you know just like you know your role as this is to do this and it's it's all very equal and when we start shooting it's you know that exact same thing and so i really appreciate that and like adore that and that goes to even like you know, our director using preferred pronouns, like that is like the most beautiful thing that someone can ask. And like, sometimes we'll be shooting and he'll be like, Quintessa, uh, I'm not sure where they are, but they should be right here. And I'll be like, Neil, I'm right in front of you, but like, thank you. <laughs> so it's, it's awesome, like people seeing you, like that's the most important thing. Voyages is set in the future on a spaceship uh, headed to a planet which uh, they have found which is inhabitable by humans. So it's a kind of exploration uh, trip and it opens in the ship and the kids on there are going to live and die on the ship and their children will have children and their children will be the ones that reach the planet. Um, so it kind of opens there and it's just all about these kids who are teenagers. For the crew, I think Richard's the only one that's ever shown them any love, and he's the one who's sort of raised them, more or less. So he kind of represents this kind of father figure. But also for Zach, someone he wants to rebel against, uh, who thinks he's controlling him. He's got the sci-fi aspect, obviously, being on a spaceship, and it's all very futuristic. It's that's really impressive. Um, it's got the thriller thing, because it's in such a tight space, and it's kind of like a whodunit as well. You got you got Finn, you got Ty, who was lovely as well. You got Lily, who was incredible. You got uh, Shante, incredibly poised, um, and this sort of something wonderfully um, intelligent about her. Um, Quintessa, amazing. 
um, Archie Medecqui, amazing. Archie Renault, amazing. Uh, Isaac, amazing. Madison, amazing. Like, it's really cool being involved in something like this because, like, everyone is grand. Even like, Wern as well, I forgot to mention Wern. Amazing. Everyone's really grand, I think, um, with varying levels of sort of experience. Um, but also everyone is sort of very normal. Um, I don't know quite what I expected, but it's um, it's sort of fulfilled and met and surpassed my expectations in terms of like the type of people um, and the other actors. Um, and it's really interesting, like working with sort of, it's like half American, half British cast wise, um, which is really exciting. Um, I get a little bit of home away from home with some of the Brits um, and I get an experience of something a bit different with um, the American folk, but uh, all amazing, all great actors. Take this person, this person, this person, this person from all these different environments, from all these different sort of lifestyles. Let's breed, essentially, these children. They're bred. Let's breed them, put them into a space and put them into an environment where, like, loads of things that matter to us as people don't matter and aren't observed. So all the sort of like uh, modern dayness is thrust away almost, and you're sort of dealt with like, I'm gonna do this because it feels good, I'm gonna do this because I wanna do this, and I'm gonna eat this because it tastes good. And it's like cut down to those sort of like raw, like as Neil would have said, like that sort of like base sort of animalism. Um, and I think that's why it's sort of quite exciting, I think. Um, it's because you see kids, not as kids, you see them as like animals. It's kind of a science fiction, psychological terror horror movie. It takes place on a spaceship um, about 40 years in the future. And it's a multi-generational uh, space mission to another planet, a newly discovered planet. It's going to take about 80 years to get there. And the story is really about a crew, the first crew, um, who are this group of 30 young people who've been raised in isolation so they won't miss Earth. And it's about them living in this spaceship, basically this confinement for the rest of their lives. And at a certain point in the story, they discover a secret about the mission, something they're not supposed to know. And after that, everything starts to descend into chaos. All the carefully planned mission just gradually comes apart. On the one hand, they're supposed to be, as I said, they, don't, they lack an individuality to start with. They've, they've grown, they've been brought up in isolation. They've never known anything about the Earth. Now they're on this confined ship. Um, so on one hand, they had to be able to act that. It sounds easier than it is, but they had to sort of get rid of all their modern idiosyncrasies, all their nervous energy out the window and just get rid of all of that. But on the other hand, they all had to obviously have a, a personality and a sort of a soulfulness that emerges out of that. Or depending on who the character was, it's kind of a wildness or a deviousness or a defiance or an anger or a hatred. Um, so we have a really diverse group of people in the movie and um, who are all amazing. You know, they're all rising stars. Some of them are stars like Ty, Ty Sheridan and certainly Lily Rose Depp is well known by everybody now. And, um, and, but what was important for me was that they all be able to really deliver strong performances. And to me, it was the movies all, if it's all about human nature, then it's all about these characters. Um, and, uh, and it was critical that, you know, we assemble a cast that, that we could believe and, and believe would be on this ship and, and also believe that they would act out. For the character of Richard, I needed somebody that was fundamentally good with an incredibly generous empathy. And with Colin, you just see it all in his eyes. You know, you, you know how he's feeling. Um, and so he was perfect to play this guy who really sacrifices his life 
for these young people. Um, he also has a secret. He knows he knows the secret of the mission, um, and he he believes in the mission. But he also is torn because he's keeping it from these from these kids who he's so devoted to and so and cares so much about. Um, and he's he's not a good liar actually, and uh, and they sense that he's hiding something. And even though he's given everything to them they begin to distrust him because of that, because they sense he's not telling them everything. And Colin was just able to play all of that uh, so well. And you know, it was a real pleasure for me as a director to watch. I think that, that audience first and foremost are gonna be watching something that's kind of an edge of your seat thriller. Um, the suspense is so intense um, in it that it's, it just has like this agonizing tension over the course of it, as you kind of watch these characters trying to decide what they are going to do in this, you know, under just like really, really intense circumstances and how they're gonna make their way um, through this. They're sort of trapped in this confined ship um, and as everything is all moral order is breaking down and it's like, what are they gonna do to, you know, to survive this ordeal? I think that's what they're what they're first going first and foremost going to feel, um, and so it's also about this kind of awakening of of you know what it is to be human, the sensual desires, and so it has this it has this kind of euphoric thriller quality to it, and it it's um, you know it just becomes this wild ride. I think the theme that I love the most, and I can't take credit for this because Neil kind of summed it up, is answering the question, why be good? You know, why not take what you want to take, sleep with whoever you want to sleep with? You know, why be civil? What's, why have a community? Why not just do whatever makes you happy? Why do we need to make sacrifices for the next generation and the generation after that? And in fact, making decisions and sacrifices for generations that we won't even see. You know, and, and I think that's a great microcosm to just the world and the planet, is what we're, how we're kind of strip mining um, the planet of, of, of whatever we need, because it's going to help us out now. You know, climate change, all these things that are, that are the repercussions of our, you know, you could say selfish decisions as a, as a, as a, as a culture, you know, we're paying the price for, but mostly the generations after us are paying the price for and so that, that kind of self-discipline of why be good. The thing about Colin is that he, he brings a decency um, to the role. He brings a, an empathy to the role. Um, but at the same time, there's a bit of mischief in his eyes. There's a bit of darkness between, you know, in, in, internally there, which I think is great for the character because the character on its face is a very sympathetic character. And, and incredibly selfless with the idea of going up and dying, you know, not finding love, acknowledging that he will never find love, never find companionship, but kind of makes a sacrifice to come up onto this ship, this very, you know, claustrophobic limiting ship um, to see his final days trying to raise these kids. Um, sounds very selfless, but I think over the course of time in a very subtle way, you realize that there's other stuff happening. Hi there movie lovers, Debbie here with today's movie fact. Ever wondered how astronauts spend their time in space? Well, Apollo 13, Armageddon and Around the World in 80 Days are among some of the movies NASA keeps aboard the International Space Station. Remember to click below to subscribe on the side for more great content and if you like my t-shirt you can get it at the link right below this video.